Recently, I've come to realize my true aspiration in life of being a city planner. Robert Moses is literally my idol. Not that Robert Moses, this one. Either way, one part of being a civil engineer, at least in America, is all of the roads. You can't escape from the roads. Fortunately for me, finding some way of tying my interest to AP US history was fairly straightforward. Coupled with the rise of the automobile in the United States was the growing pains of the inadequate road system in America at the time. The US put a high importance on roads and acknowledged the importance of the automobile for commerce. As a testament to their devotion to improving roads in America, Congress passed the Federal Aid Road Act of 1916. Due to the small scope of the Road Act of 1916, it did more to improve and construct roads within a municipality than to connect to other cities. This contributed to divisions between regions as they were divorced from the rest of the nation. At this time, the 1919 Transcontinental Motor Convoy took place. Among the 282 military personnel driving 81 vehicles, 3,251 miles from Washington, D.C. to San Francisco was Lieutenant Colonel Dwight D. Eisenhower. Their finding was that it was near impossible to cross the entire continental United States by land, thanks to the impenetrable wall of nature standing in the way. A few years later, the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1921 was passed, with the intention of, you know, building highways. And highways are known for connecting cities to each other. This had the impact of reducing these regional separations. Roads were built between cities, but were limited due to the technology available at the time. Construction after passing of this act was similar to Native Americans' agricultural practices, adapting to the environment. If there was a mountain in the way of a soon-to-be road, then they would build the road around it. That was all about to change with the election of President Dwight D. Eisenhower. The 1919 Transcontinental Motor Convoy resonated with him as he remembered how difficult it was to travel across the nation. Now in the Cold War era, there was legitimate desire to upgrade the road network in the United States for various reasons. They wanted a way to quickly evacuate cities in the event of an atomic bomb being dropped, and they wanted a way to quickly mobilize the military in the event of an attack on American soil. Familiar with the advent of limited access highways from his service in World War II, Dwight D. Eisenhower passed the National Interstate and Defense Highways Act which allocated the funds necessary for the creation of the Dwight D. Eisenhower U.S. Interstate Highway System, known colloquially as the Interstate. This cut through land like it wasn't even there, and in some situations, cities. On the bright side, the Interstate has fulfilled its purpose of helping in evacuations, except not for atomic bombs. Instead, it has been used to evacuate hurricanes, floods, and tornadoes. While the military hasn't had to use the highway for an attack on U.S. soil, it contributes to the economy in a plethora of ways. The construction and maintenance creates countless jobs. Highways provide people with fast commutes to work, permitting people to live even further from their place of employment, contributing to the rise of the suburbs. Small townships located near highway exits flourish. Highways can connect cities, making it possible for people to travel from coast to coast in a matter of two days, a far cry from the two months it once took people to travel the Oregon Trail during the days of westward expansion. With the nationwide access this roadway provides, people can migrate where they want at a relatively affordable cost. All of this led to a more interconnected America. While each state has its own culture and way of life, the ease of access between states has helped to unite states in the United States. So there you have it, the roadway system in America, and hopefully I've helped you recognize its impact. So as for me being a city planner, it would be kind of dope, but I just got to be a more ethical guy than my idol Robert Moses, and I should probably disclose that he is not in fact my idol. 